Hey there, welcome back to Polysthetic. I thought I'd record a follow-up video to my previous video where I showed you the pixel art modeling and shader techniques. This video specifically I'll be showing you how I achieved the, the flow of traffic uh, effect in the elevated and ground roads on the city video. We're going to be using Blender's particle systems and forces on a curve object. Let's switch over to the screen. So this is where we left off in the last video. I've got an emitter object here. Let's pull this down and zoom in. So this is just a plane rotated this way. It has a particle system that emits a collection and that collection is the cars collection so underneath this collection there's two objects two car models so the particle emitter just behaves like that so i'm going to shrink it down so we're emitting from the same place let's fix the phase here that's a bit better now let's pretend we've created a model for a road here and we want it, the particles to follow that path so let's look at the top down view press shift A and we'll add a curve and I work with Bezier curves usually. Uh, let's pull it out of this collection here so we don't emit it as a particle and I'll scale it up and hit tab to go into the edit mode. I press G to move the points and R to rotate them. Let's make sure that's at the medium point. There we go. And the trick to understanding Bezier curves is to rotate the anchor points uh, to match the direction of the curve. So if we're curving this way, we add the first point here and then we rotate it. And if the curve is too sharp, select the anchor point and drag them in. So let's say we want our particles to follow this path. What you do is you select your curve object, go into the physics properties panel and add a force field. Now there's two ways you can achieve this effect. I'll show you the first one is using Curve Guide. Now what this does is it interpolates the lifetime of your particles to perfectly match the curve. So if you want to control the speed of the cars, you actually adjust the lifetime of the particles. First thing we do, back into our particle settings, scroll all the way down, make sure your field weight is on one. Make sure your gravity is zero, else they'll just drop, provided we're not using a curve guide. Now those cars are flying through, so we'll increase their lifetime here. So in, now they're taking 200 frames for, to reach the end. Now if we want the particles to rotate along the path, go into your, make sure your rotation settings are ticked, and click dynamic. And this will force the particles to move along the direction of any applied forces. And there you go. Now this does look a bit stiff because the particles are strictly following the path. So alternatively, what you can do is select your curve, go back into your physics settings and change the force field type to force. Now with forces, a positive value is a repulsive force, whilst a negative one is attractive. So we need to make this value negative and change the shape to curve. There we go. And increase your flow value if your strength is too high. This will control the, the flow of traffic. But here you'd have to manually adjust your particle lifetime to make sure that they don't go back along the path. So if we decrease the lifetime of these particles, let's say make them only last 90 frames, all of them should you know, terminate at the end, just before the end. So it's just personal preference. Now what if we want to add another lane in opposing good direction? Instinctively you might think to duplicate the scimitar. So shift D, we'll move it here. And then we duplicate our curve. Shift D, press X to move along the X. And we'll just adjust these two points. And we want this on the other lane. So we'll move this here. This should work, right? 
example, if we hit play, you'll see that they don't move in any direction. And that's because you've got two separate force fields. So what you need to do is separate the force fields and have the particles only respond to one of them. And you do this using collections. So let's add a new collection here. We'll call it physics. And underneath that, we'll add another collection. We'll call this left lane. And another collection here, right lane. And so our right lane will move under the right lane collection. Our left lane will move under the left lane collection. And for this first emitter, We'll go to the particle settings, uh, field weights, and choose the left lane collection. And just like that, all well, the cars are now moving along the left lane correctly. Now notice here, these cars are moving along this lane as well. That's because it's the same particle system instance. So it's, it's the same reference. What you need to do is see how there's a number two here, which means that it's being used on two separate objects. Click that button. This makes this instance of a particle system unique. So they don't share data with each other. And here, scroll down to the image effector collection, change it to the right lane. And so now you have two lanes of traffic. Set this to curve guide again. Okay, so now we have one lane of traffic going the right way, but this one is not. Now what you want to do is select your second curve. Now understand that the first control point with the solid line is where the particles start. So any particles that fall into this region will fall under the effect of the curve guide and they will terminate at the other sphere with a dashed line. So tab, press tab to go into the edit mode, A to select all points, and then go segments, switch direction. There you go. So now in this curve, this emitter, which is part of the right lane effector collection, all the particles here are now being um, affected by this curve guide. This one here has no circles, so if you were to move this, you'll notice that the behavior is very jittery, so try and bring your emitters as close as possible, but also tweak this parameter here, the minimum distance. And just make sure that the particles are captured uh, underneath that force field. You don't have to worry about this as much if you're using uh, the standard force field instead of the curve guide, uh, but it is a bit more difficult to control because you have to adjust the strength and the flow parameter. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you took something away from that. Uh, if you like this content, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. I will be doing a Godot uh, devlog and C sharp coding series. I'm still filming those and going to start editing them and begin uploading them around late June, early July. So I'll see you all there. Thank you for watching.